Vietnam. Mangui uh, let me first pay salutation to Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, who taught the truth of dependent origination, Pratita Samubhada. And among all the great spiritual teachers of the world, one thing that really defines the Buddha as a unique teacher from the Buddhist point of view is his teaching on dependent origination. And dependent origination, Pratita Samupada, really captures the essence of Buddha's insight and Buddha's teaching. Now, when we look at the term itself, dependent origination, Pratita Samupada, and in Tibetan is Tenjung, which is composed of two syllables. One is dependent, and second, ten. The second is jua, which is origination. And these two syllables really capture a powerful insight into the understanding of the nature of reality. The first, the word dependent, really indicates the basic truth, how everything is dependent upon each other. Nothing is independent. And it is through this dependence, which is the actual fundamental reality of everything. And then the second element, origination, points out how things come into being through this interrelatedness, through this dependence. So on the one hand, when you think about the concept of teaching on dependence, nothing is left that exists independently. But then we cannot conclude by saying, therefore, nothing exists. That's why the second element is important, because given though, even though there are nothing that is independent, but through dependent relationships, things can come into being. And it is the understanding of that truth of dependent origination that can really help us, you know, dispel, you know, ignorance and misunderstanding about the nature of reality. So understanding dependent origination as the heart of the Buddha's teaching and the characteristic of Buddha as a teacher of dependent origination is really important. And then, Garazo Chasaga and the Dauta were woman jugue, Chujuganala, Kunji Seni Gare, Lodo Pinzondi, Savon Dan and Bella Chundra Yurindu, Longer Nala, Mibotabu, Dejava, Tishitaga, Tomo Ninji Tabriki, Seni, 
Kada sam çadan yivu deki nyokra sangma sö yungu yuva indi zane se o gönlü peki pembe sanpa gönlü dünge de tena dewa de dena sanpe zeve lo tete eni şevuşi ki sağışım ureyiz eni bandan da otak ve umuncuk ve sanpe kutuğru ya çözü ki yüşen masum var ninci soğulu suna di eni sanje ve çöğü ki tamonu kewa Pardo kewa, tamur kewa, ningji di, shiwu shi sa shi wushi tuwa. So, how does this, you know, why is this understanding of dependent origination important? Because if we examine our day to day experience of being in the world, we will, each of us will recognize that at the heart of our existence is a strong sense of self, I, I, I. And when you lack the insight into dependent origination, our tendency to grasp at this self as real is going to be strong. Once you have a grasping at a self as something real, then the basis for division between I and you, self and others, arises. And on this basis, our reaction, emotions arise. Attachment to those who think are close to us, who we, who are important to us, and aversion to the people that we see as different, or maybe dangerous to us. So this aversion and you know, attachment really arises on the basis of our perception of and grasping at sense of self. Therefore, along with the Buddha's teaching on dependent origination, the other important teaching is the teaching on compassion. And the importance of the compassion as the heart of Buddha's teaching can be recognized in Chantrakirti's text, Entering the Middle Way, where he compares when he writes the salutation at the beginning of the text, unlike other texts and other masters, he chooses compassion to be the object of his salutation at the beginning. And when he pays homage to compassion, he compares compassion to uh, the seed that is important at the beginning for spiritual growth. He compares it to the moisture in the middle that you know enables the seeds to grow. And he compares to the fruition at the result as well, so pointing out the importance of compassion throughout all stages of spiritual development. So when you combine compassion and wisdom of dependent origination, then you have the heart of the Buddha's teaching. So today in this anatta, Sibe Sabha Namshe De Yunam De Jiyulo Yulo Dangme Tono Ni Sibe Sabha Kawa Yuru Sate. Da. Number so as Buddhists, our task is to cultivate these two qualities, compassion and wisdom. And with respect to wisdom, as I spoke earlier, at the heart of which is the teaching on dependent origination, or in other words, the teaching on no self. And the teaching on no self is important, and how do we cultivate this? And here, the second century Buddhist master, Aryadeva, says the following. Um, the root of cyclic existence is consciousness, and the objects are what consciousness experiences. When you gain insight into the no self, or non, you know, no reality of the objects, that's when we will you know, exterminate the seed that will give rise to existence. So in other words, you know, many of the problems that we face that lead also to samsara existence really are rooted in the way in which we perceive reality. Although reality lacks independent existence or self-existence, we tend to, you know, believe in the appearance and we follow after the appearances of things being real out there. And once through cultivation of wisdom, we begin to see absence of such 
independent existence, then our tendency to grasp and our tendency to have attachment based on that grasping will be loosened. And in this way, wisdom will arise. Oh, in an answer, Jor Lunge, Thor Tidua, Sibong, O Niki Tong, O Niki Sidache, Sib, Nanj Sibi, Shunji Tamolo, Chick Nam Ding is required, Chick Nam is required, Chick Dinig, Chick to take a required with the Dig to Zayundu, No Diddy send it, Maranzo, Tanya, Nanja, Yabaja, Nan, and she get ten and never chick, Tachu Dua. Sivongoni Yao just sound Chono any Kazo in is our tendency to believe in the appearance that we experience, our tendency to project onto reality things which are actually not real, and tendency to project independent existence. So as I said earlier, through cultivation of wisdom, at the heart of which is the teaching on shunyata, emptiness, one will also begin to recognize that our perception does not mirror reality so that we don't naively believe and run after the projection that we are experienced through our perception. When we are able to do that, then this will free us from strong craving and grasping, and the craving is removed, not simply because you wish it away, but by gaining insight into the nature of reality. So in this way, when you are able to remove craving, then the mind becomes pure. And that purity of the mind, that state, is nirvana. It's a, nirvana is a state of mind. Therefore, earlier I said that what is required on the part of us as Buddhist practitioners is to really you know, uh, pay attention to these dual processes 
One is the process of uh, de deconstruction of our tendency to grasp, which is the practice of the wisdom, no self emptiness, so that we free ourselves from grasping. The other is a active process of cultivation of qualities like compassion, such as I cited from Chantrakirti. So through this combination of you know, cultivation of wisdom through removing ignorance and through this active cultivation of compassion, then there is a real possibility of attaining enlightenment as Buddha suggested. Therefore, it is important for us Buddhists because otherwise when we think about you know, existence as characterized by suffering. If there is no way out from suffering, if there is no solution, then focus on suffering alone can be, you know, uh, demoralizing. But the Buddha's message is ultimately a positive one. You know, there is end to suffering. There is a possibility of a freedom from suffering. And that is through gaining insight into the nature of reality and cultivating the qualities like compassion. And I can share with you that although I cannot claim to have deep experience myself, but I can share with you that as a result of reflecting deeply and practicing deeply over decades, it really feels there is, once you begin to get a sense or taste, that there is a sense of freedom that comes within you. So there is a real possibility of a transformation. Tinde Yindusane, Umunju Sigdi, Tedalo to Sejinao Sejane, Rangalana, Neve Kuru Rashindu, Sisum de da Molu, Tene Kemebor, Tode Tanya, Tembedo, Gobonro, Sagi, Ta Shinen Jogum de Ande, Shu Yungumino, Mother Shen, Chig, Jolam Toyagi, Jawa, Tende, Leguduwa. So, um, the same author. Uh, Chandrakirti also says that uh, as you sharpen and develop your own qualities of the mind, um, and then the illumination of that, your own mind, will you know, open up nature of reality. And through the skillful means of conventional truth, which is the method aspect of the path, then one will be able to travel to the shore of enlightenment. So, and, and an important part of that, which is a challenge, is to actually develop uh, shamatha, the ability to maintain your mind completely focused and settled for a long period of time. And this is one area I still struggle myself, but still I feel that you know I'm able to make some progress in the direction that uh, Chandrakirti is suggesting. <laughs> Tedolo so, gentlemen, so um, Chantrakriti also says in that same text, actually the, the, the next verse, he says that how when you are able to gain deep insight into the nature of reality through the wisdom of emptiness, in fact, compassion will naturally arise for the beings who are suffering in the world. So the compassion for suffering beings is a byproduct of wisdom that is cultivated. And when we, one is able to cultivate wisdom of emptiness and compassion, then, you know, one is equipped with the two wings, like a powerful bird. And then with these two wings of compassion and wisdom, one will be able to cruise the space towards enlightenment. So I truly feel that this kind of teaching and imagery that Chantrakirti is providing gives us 
kind of an optimism and hope as a practitioner. I'm in my late 80s now, and I still practice. And uh, you know, my hope is you know, to be able to at least reach the second stage of the marga, which is the path of preparation uh, before, before, my, before the end of my, my, my life. 친주간에 사이에 관세 직시도 우차샤나 쉐고 차고 소시고 사드레 친주간에 공구요리 이래 다 디스물이 영어도 보게 구교 탱에리 안데 샤마 타고 난 신기 뚱니게 따와다 장주고 샘다 디토네 에니 샘리 영원의 단에게 구교 탱구도가 so, in my own Tibetan tradition, as you know, um, there is also the Vajrayana, a tantric practice, which involves meditation on deity. And in my case, uh, deity visualization has been an important part of my practice, even from my childhood, a particular form of deity, Vajrayana. But, you know, to be frank, uh, even though I do these practices, the practice where I really feel the greatest impact in my own mind is the cultivation of wisdom, and especially the cultivation of bodhicitta, which is the aspiration to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all beings grounded in compassion. These are the two main practices that really seem to make a real impact uh, in my mind. <laughs> Uh Chasanko Tagan Many of us who are gathered here are followers of the Buddha. We see ourselves as practitioners of Dharma. So uh, the reason why I shared some part of my own personal experience and practice is to really bring home the point that all of us, each one of us, if we take our Buddhist practice seriously through cultivation of, through meditation, and the meditation really needs to combine both analytic meditation of deep inquiry uh, into the nature of reality, understanding of compassion, and also internalization of that through meditative practice. So this combination of both resting meditation and analytic discerning meditation is really the way to go. And if you are able to do this, you can really see a real difference even in your day-to-day -day life once you are able to cultivate a little bit of wisdom, you know, you change the way you see the re reality and your own existence. When you are able to cultivate compassion, then you really see uh, the, ex the difference in your own day-to-day -day life. And those who are serious practitioners, if we dedicate more time to personal practice, we will also be able to have aspiration to attain a higher levels of realization as well. So I urge all of you to make some effort. Narado Namju, che kompotha sanzu put ngatung chik pet ani thung ta ya ta kengni ta ya ro tsu chege pet amjo sa sa shish chigor de 
perché come già tolle sarà si ma so santa de tu so da de ruo io so sto da ga da ga do nga bu tre nga ga so nga bu de ge si si shu ji ga to chor chumuru sha de go go gre da mi eh cha san nga bu cha san de zo che ge de ne ji go go gre de in ne zo zo de ni ji shin do cha ju go som do dong ni ge da wa le ya san wo da de e ne chang me shuk jiao che hu da na shuo de se ne yam yong ta ne ta chi song da mo yin na di de se wo ro cha yong do wa e da chi san mo yin bo ngo na cha ne ge se wo ro cha yin de e ne che ro san wo lo ge e ne chan jo sun ji ge ta ne e ne chan ju ge sun do dong ni ge ta wa le ya ke ze tou do ge e ne san lo ta na shu a se ni ge di shu ya yin de ge e da ka da ji che che le che 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 That is the ritual of these performance rituals is not the most important one. Because if you focus too much on the rituals, the only thing that you get is all the noise these musical instruments <laughs> create. Where we should really pay more attention and focus is the inner development, inner cultivation. And inner cultivation has to be done through, as I shared before, combination of this analytic and resting approach, resting the mind, focusing it, settling the mind, then applying it and so that you can combine. And the focus of those two approaches has to be really cultivation of wisdom, some understanding of the nature of reality, and then cultivation of compassion, and particularly bodhicitta. And if we are able to do this, as I said earlier, in my case, you know, they've become, if you, spend some time on inner cultivation through meditation, these teachings become real, they become fresh, they become alive. It is, and, and in fact, by making these teachings come to life in you, you really experience the fruits and the benefits of the Buddha's teachings. So since many of us who are gathered here are practitioners, I really wanted to make this important point. So also, at the same time, urge all of you to you know put more effort into your own daily practice <laughs> Quando si è nato, 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 si è and compassion, um, it really can help increase our courage as well. For example, in the case of my dealing with the current struggle and situation of Tibet, you know, if you think just only about it from a narrow angle, you can lose your hope. But if you look at this crisis, look at this current situation from the broader perspective of the courage that the cultivation of bodhicitta and compassion gives you, then you can have a much more resilient mind. So even in your own life, day-to-day -day life, 
There might be problems which may seem enormous and unbearable, but if you have the courage that bodhicitta and these practices can give you, you will be in a much stronger position to actually turn adversities and difficulties, not be overwhelmed by them, but actually transform them creatively into opportunities as, you know, sort of a further, you know, assistance on your own path. So this courage coming from the practice is a powerful tool for transforming, dealing with adversities and transforming adversities into opportunities. Oh, that day, when I was in the domain, I was in the domain, and I was in the domain, and I was in the and this angel Lenny, they shun the yid some of the shoot on the year. The shivuji, the lolly, Pando yon the other day, the Mindun Rosinda, Chazanga, Lord Chankoya Sadi, the Gumzendi, Susu Kevin Yakshudi, Lord Chankbetone, and the Yoyachi. That's how many in the Huda Naronos, Shahin, and Terry. で、ケジュースルジペジチャデシャ。だから様々で出てきた地図地、あとだ、あ、ガランズルとかそれ any churu and yore, chigi digi digi, mingalia, one jigada, where Sanji Vichu and Yamlin Chen, chinga didi, one jig kayo layogi, chig drumdi, which grow tonya to go somewhere sooner, did them be shamdin to re, then be good in soyare, uh, Sandy Samolo, Gombashi, any, a Hudana Shoa. So, uh, in my own case, um, I was uh, a young child born in the remote uh, part of Tibet, in the northeastern part of Tibet, and brought to central Tibet. And ever since I had the opportunity to be schooled in the study of the Buddhist texts, and um, you know, many of these Buddhist texts are texts, treatises written by great Indian masters, and which really present these teachings on wisdom and uh, compassion. And I have personally found uh, them to be deeply uh, impactful while in Tibet, and especially ever since coming into exile, I familiarized myself with these texts, contemplated on the content of these teachings, and I personally find them to be a powerful source, not just for personal practice, but also mental resilience to give me courage. And I think this is really important to keep in mind um, you know, today we have a large gathering of representatives from various Buddhist countries. It's a, this is an international gathering. Of course, Buddhism is one among many religions on this, plate, on this planet. Yes, all great major traditions of the world carry a message that is the same, love, compassion, and so on. But I would say that one, what makes Buddhist, you know, the Buddha Dharma unique is the richness of the resources that are found in the tradition to really for inner development, particularly through the combination of what I called analytic, you know, meditative approach and more concentrative, you know, restful meditation practice. The meditation practice is very rich and aimed at transforming our own mind. So that I think is an important feature of Buddha Dharma, and if we um, you know, recognize this, and if we embody it in our day-to-day -day life, then the fruits of that embodiment will be obvious 
to everybody, not just to Buddhists. You know, there are many uh, different faith traditions uh, in this world. There are also many people who do, who do not subscribe to any particular tradition. But for all of them, if we as Buddhists can illustrate through our own life the benefit and value of Buddha Dharma, I would say this would be a service to the Buddha Dharma. This would be a way of saying thank you, expressing our gratitude to our teacher, Buddha. So this is something that I wanted to share with you.